Welcome to Small Biz Life, episode 76, your first day. Best Wednesday ever. Does this sound familiar? Oh my God, I have so much to do today. Don't forget to breathe. But I have almost 400 emails in my inbox and 30 phone calls to make. Have you looked into getting a virtual assistant yet? Oh, and I need to schedule all my social media posts. Did you drink anything today? I had coffee. Did you eat today? Did I mention coffee's a bean? (sighs) This is Small Biz Life. Hey guys, welcome to another exciting episode of Small Biz Life. My name is Kristen Ingram. And I'm Jeffrey W. Ingram. And we are a husband and wife team of small business owners who are helping you cut through the crap so that you can get to what's important in your business and in your life. You know, that's why we have, you know, this is small biz life. That's right. Right. There's a lot more to small biz life than just small biz. Um, No matter who you are, no matter what you do, you have these relationships which are important to you. You have... Uh, your friends, your family, you have all of these things that you're trying to juggle. And so this is where we help you stop juggling. And like Kristen said, just hey, get through the crap. That's right. And that's the thing. We want you to have a life. Yes. That is, you know, critically important to this and, and trying to find, you know, I hate using the word balance, but, you know, trying to find a place for all of the wonderful aspects of your life. <laughs> so... This so if you're a returning listener, we want to thank you so much for being with us again this week. Mm-hmm. And if you're new to the show, welcome. Yeah, we, we love having you. We had a lot of new likes and uh, people joined the Facebook group this week. So you know, if this is your first episode with us, I think you tuned into a really good one. Mm. Um, you know, other than the fact that you know we both had the flu, and so <laughs> our voices aren't um, perfect this week. Definitely not perfect at all. But, um, you know, we're trying to keep the energy levels high and, uh, because this is, you know, this show is really important to us and I know that this show is really important to a lot of you. Mm. And so we hope you'll excuse our raspy voices this week. Hopefully the soundboard can make up for our, uh, raspy voices. So, yep. So go soundboard, you know, so I had, I came down with the flu on Monday and then Jeff came down with the flu on Friday. Mm, well, I think um, Thursday night, really. So, but, you know, we're both kind of recovering from that. So bear with us today um, as we walk you through this journey that we're calling <laughs> the first day. The first day, the day after. So, you know, you might be thinking, you know, you know, I haven't gone and transitioned into my business full time yet. Or maybe you've been running your business full time for five, ten, you know, 20 years, we want you to kind of think about as Jeff is making his transition to his first full day, Mm -hmm. right? Which is going to be this week. Um, what if, if you haven't had your first day yet, what would you want it to look Mm -hmm. like? And if you have already had your first day, maybe it might be time to have another first day. Yeah. Cause one of the things that I think we've both learned across this journey that we're taking together is that you have multiple first days, really, you know, and it's like we've transitioned how much time we've and effort we've been putting into what were originally just side projects for us that we were doing for fun um, and, and started growing into something larger. But along the way, there were two or three first days in there as well, too, as we learned and adapted from uh, previous failures and just experiences, not necessarily all failures. Right. But, you know, I think a lot of times when people start a business, they just kind of like hit the ground running and they go and there may not be a lot of planning involved with what, you know, your first day would look like. Mm -hmm. Or any day. (laughs) Right. And so I we've tried to be really conscious of what Jeff's first day is going to look like. Um, and what his days after that are going to look like. So we kind of want to talk about that process with you a little bit. Mm-hmm. So either if, you know, you're anticipating that, you know, that first day of working full time in your business or, 
you know, maybe you've been doing this for a while and you're not getting the traction that you want, or maybe you feel a little bit disorganized. Um, this, you know, there's going to be some really good tips in here for mm. you as well. Yeah. Oh, go ahead. Now I was going to say, so really where I started, um, and this is after we had made the decision, um, late December, early January that I was going to leave my job, I guess, uh, very late December, uh, was I did a time budget. Yes. Yes. You know, I think for a lot of people, um, and I was definitely one of these people man- managing my time, like a lot always bothered me. Uh, I'm a kind of what you might call a free spirit. You know, I, I like to move and be agile and sort of f- go with the flow and I had done that for, you know, like 45 years and it really didn't work. Um, <laughs> and the thing was, because of it, as, as you know, our side projects grew into a part-time business on the side, I was having less and less time to get anything I wanted to done. It was either work for uh, an employer or work for home, which that's more fun work, but it's still work and it's still not time with friends and family. And it became impossible to juggle until I started doing a time budget. So one of the first, probably the first task I did actually was I put together my time budget of what I would think my week was going to look like. Now, this has the understanding that, wait a second, um, I'm new to this kind of budget. Um, It's probably not right, but what I'll do is I'm going to give it a good solid month and I'm going to see how well I can stick to it where and where I need to make adjustments, but it's like any monetary budget. Um, the less you've done it the way you're doing it, uh, the further off you're probably going to be. Right. And you know, if you're interested in learning more about time budgeting, we actually have a mini course, Mm. um, on time management that includes how to do a time budget and how to do a master schedule. And we're running a promotion right now, that if you sign up for Small Biz HQ, which is our monthly membership Mm -hmm. site, you get the time budgeting mini course for free. Mm -hmm. And because of the work that we're doing next month, we're going to be talking a lot about content creation. Yeah, We would like to offer you guys to join Small Biz HQ for your first month Mm -hmm. for $5. Yeah. And part of that is just out of appreciation, uh, Due to a car accident, also last month, uh, we we are uh, trying to scrape up some extra cash to make up for uh, the accident as well, too. So, giving us a try will help us take care of that, and we can provide you with great content for at least a month. They give you a chance to check it out before you go ahead and start paying the full rate. Right. So, if you're interested in signing up for that, um, go to smallbizlife.com, click on Small Biz HQ put in the coupon code March four five March F O R five. And that's also going to be in the show notes for this episode. Mm. So you actually spell out for not like 45. Well, I'm actually, it's set up both ways. So it doesn't matter (laughs) because I want to make sure that everybody gets the coupon code. Very good. And that will give you the, your first month of small biz life, which would normally be $49 a month. You can check us out for $5 for Mm -hmm. the first month. Yeah. So thank you for checking us out. And as part of that, there's a worksheet for the new time budget that we came up with inside of the time management course. And it might be within the first month of Small Biz HQ too. I'm not sure. Um, but uh, the thing is, once I got that done, it was setting up a master schedule. You know, once again, more and more um, structure, you know, for time and I could never really manage my time the way I wanted to in my day job. It just they didn't have the flexibility to allow me to to go into full Pomodoro mode and um, and work my life that way. But um, I'm going full in now. Here, I get, typically get a lot more done within time frames if I work in Pomodoro mode. Which, just to briefly sum it up, is essentially I'll I have a short attention span, so I'll work for 25 minute blocks. And then I'll have five minute breaks. And there are certain types of activities where I don't need such a short block. So I'll do an hour block, but that's more for writing, um, <laughs> fiction, um, uh, for other stuff. I just need more breaks because my, my brain starts to wonder. So I, it gives me a chance to go and keep refocused and keep my energy levels high so I can get more work done. Right. So 
I think you, so you said you typically do five, 25 minutes on, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. And then five minute break. Yeah. And when you're writing, you do 50 minutes of mm-hmm. writing and a 10 minute break. Correct. Okay. And you can set that up with timers. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know. I use Pomodoro timers. Uh, we have several episodes. I think we've talked about those. And if you're uh, a member of Small Biz HQ, there's actually uh, videos getting very specific into that. Right. So I think, so let's kind of, let's take a step back a little bit because I don't know how many people realize we actually have three brands. (laughs) So, because I think, you know, you guys, you know, you know, Small Biz Life, right? And you know the products that we're putting out for Small Biz Life. Mm -hmm. Um, But we actually have two other brands. All very important. So... One brand is called Accounting and Focus, Mm -hmm. and that's a site that um, I started working on in 2014 um, because I found that a lot of my students wanted more content from Mm -hmm. me. So like if they missed a class or, you know, the videos that came with the textbook weren't very good. So I started making my own videos and putting them up on YouTube. Mm -hmm. Um, That site has grown to 80 to 100,000 unique visitors a month. Mm -hmm. Um. And so, you know, that's one of the projects that you're going to be working on. And Mm -hmm. we'll talk about that a little bit later. And then you also have Gardool. And the World Builders Anvil podcast. All right. So tell people a little bit about what that is. So Gardool is a a name of a fictional world I created. It is a dwarven word that means uh, small or large cave. I'm sorry. Uh, And that goes into the dwarven cosmology, which I go into more on that show. So um, for so for those of you that are like, okay, he has a world. What if you think about like I think the the best way to kind of describe it is, you know, if you're if you've heard of Lord of the Rings, Middle Earth is its own separate world, mm-hmm. right? And there's, you know, there are hobbits and there are orcs and there are, you know, there are different races, there are different kinds of elves. Jeff has built a complete world like mm-hmm. that of his own with languages and religions and cultures. Yeah. Small part of my life there. <laughs> Large part of my bookshelf. Yes. Oh, yes. If, you, if you've ever watched any of our you know, YouTube videos um, or our Facebook videos and you see the bookshelf behind us, most of that bookshelf is full of Jeff's <laughs> world-building books. Yes, like you know, books on mythology, art, philosophy, religion, you know, all the important stuff. You know, books on games, mm-hmm. weaponry. Oh, yes. You have to have weapons. Well, that's, yeah, because if you landed in your game, in your world, you'd probably need weapons. I I would need to learn how to hide very quickly. (laughs) Because if they figured out who I was, I would be doomed. And then, so, and you have a podcast called World Builders Anvil. World Builders Anvil. And it is a podcast where I talk about how to create stuff like that, how to create uh, what I call uh, naturalistic framework worlds, worlds where you could tell multiple stories from. And you sort of use the patterns that we find in the real world and apply them to a different world so it feels natural to people. Right. And you're even though it has like, you know, magic. Right. And your first book is coming out in June. Yes. So what's the name of your book? It will be The Stuart's Son. Very exciting. Mm, yes. So as, as book you, one of the Iron Trussell Bridge. And you've actually you've written all three of those books. Yes. Yeah. All three books are written. In various draft forms, uh, the first draft will get beginning back in, I believe, May mm-hmm. from uh, Ron A. Harden from Coffee Talk with Ron A. Harden. Woohoo! Yeah, so yeah, Ron A. Harden is is editing his book for him, and um, if you have a book project and you're looking for, you know, somebody who really understands writing and is interested in helping you, you know, find your voice and mm-hmm. develop your style and make sure that you really shine on the page, you know, go to ronaharden.com. Yeah. Um, it's R O N E I.com. I've met lots of editors and I'm sure there are many other good ones like her, but she's the first one I met who I think will work to the nth level to make sure that the product you're coming out with is the best it can be. Right. So, um, and we'll also, we'll put a link. Um, we'll put a link to her in the show notes mm. for this episode. Um, but so as you can kind of see, we have like a lot going on, Mm. which is what precipitated us to go and, you know, get Jeff out of his job so he could come work for us full time. 
you know, and one of the things too is like, so I, I have my time, I have chunks each day where it's like, I have stuff for just small biz HQ where uh, essentially I'll be working with the clients or working with uh, marketing and refining the messaging for uh, uh, small biz HQ. But that'll be a couple hours of just that for a day. And then a couple for Ingram Digital Media Inc. as well, which will kind of push off into which is the hottest thing currently. Um, and Ingram Digital Media is our is the umbrella company for all the brands, mm-hmm. just so people know. And then there will be, you know, another a couple hours for Strictly Garduel, and then another uh, uh, sort of end of day hours, which will be where I'll do my world building writing stuff. I find for my fictional writing and for my uh, uh, world building, it's usually best that it's sort of at the end of the day when your brain's kind of hazy. Um, I, I actually do a lot more interesting stuff at that point. Maybe editing uh, or uh, editing, maybe not so much, but you know, for first draft kind of stuff or being really creative, I find when the brain's on the downward trend, I'm more creative. Hmm. Go figure. So um, when so you currently wake up at five o'clock in the morning <laughs> because you have to be to work for six thirty. Yes. So are you going to keep that schedule? No, absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> but why not? You know, 5 a.m. Yeah. yeah, no. Uh, a couple of reasons. One, um, uh, it, part of it is the, the world builder's audience. And I think a lot of the audience, you know, typically they're at work during a huge shift of that time. And so I'll be doing like a lot of audience outreach probably at 8 o'clock. Um, in the evening, in the evening. Okay. Um, so that'll be, you know, sort of not at the end of my work day, my work day will probably end about 10 PM. It'll probably go from about 10 AM to 10 PM, um, on, uh, Monday to Friday and a little bit on Saturday because it's one time that I, I can record with my co-host for the other show. Um, but, but now, and, and I think that sounds like a really long day. No. Well, yes and no. <laughs> but I know like you have a time, you have a chunk of time like in the middle of the day around noon mm-hmm. that you kind of recharge. Yeah. So essentially I get really dead around lunchtime. So I'll eat lunch. I will nap or read for, I'm thinking an hour and a half that could change. I'm not sure, but uh, give me time to get some lunch ready to eat and to take a nap and or read a little bit if depending on, on the time frame. Okay, and then of course a break for dinner. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right? a break for dinner, and there's also a break for uh, workout and a shower as well too. So okay, because yeah, because when you first a twelve hour day, I think a lot of people might have gone <gasps> <laughs> right. Yeah. You know, I mean, and there will be some days it will be closer to twelve hours, and there are some days it will be less. Because once again, as a small business owner, sometimes you have to make compromises. There are certain things that won't be compromised like before my day starts. Up until 10 a.m. will be very rigid as much as possible. Where and I stole it from Brendan Bouchard, the power hour will start where I get up, I pound out some water, I I do some yoga, get moving a little bit, and then I'll read for 20 minutes every day at that point. And then I'll go through from 9 to 10 and I'll get ready, have a quick light breakfast and go. Cool. I usually eat, like to eat more around lunchtime than in breakfast. And that's done the weekend and jerk cooking. Oh, okay. Well, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> And you've got planning time in there too, right? Uh, well, my first my first half hour of every day is it, actually it's the transition of the end part of my personal time and the beginning part of my time. I have daily planning time, and then I have every time I start a new task, I actually I'll plan out how I'm going to execute the task so I can knock it out as quickly as possible. Okay, even if it only takes me one minute. Um, I find that it just I get better work if I if I take it a minute before I start and go okay what's the strategy for knocking out this task? So, I think over the past couple of weeks we have done so much brainstorming. <laughs> um, I mean, like, and I can't tell you if I had a dime for every time she told me, oh, this should be high on your list. Yeah, going back to the, was it the last or two episodes ago prioritizing. Everything's hot and not really. So you really have to strategize out, I think, what's hot. Is that where you're going here? Yeah, because I think, well, I mean, the thing is, uh, yeah, I kind of wanted to transition like what your priorities were going to be because I think the more excited we got about this and determining like, oh, my God, you're going to have like, 
you know, you're going to have 40 hours a week mm-hmm. to and work on this. I could not this. get done what we've brainstormed in 40 hours a day. Yeah, probably not. <laughs> but that's the thing. It's like, you know, you get this excitement level and how do you figure out like what are the most important things that you're going to do? Uh, well, sort of needs at the company. So, you know, uh, you know, one of the big things is starting to build up revenue. Uh, we have one major revenue item at this point. Well, we have two. Well, we have two, but uh, one I see as a chance to be major. Another one is is good and it pays for a lot of stuff, but um, I see less like growth from just doing that. Mm-hmm. So it's sort of spending, and most of my small biz HQ time where I'm not dealing with the needs of group members will be refining uh, sales funnel and, and marketing approaches for that. Um, for Garduel, my major thing, and probably my other major thing until they're both done is um, my audience told me they need a course to say, this is the minimum you need to get started. This is what you have to do. And so right now I'm putting together a challenge and then um, there'll be a course too for people who want just a little bit more. Um, uh, uh, say, you know, literally walking you through, this is what you need to do. You know, in just a couple of days, you should be able to have a website out and start sharing. Even if you don't know exactly what you want to do, you can start sharing because it's amazing when your audience says, hey, this is it. Mm -hmm. Do this for us. I probably shouldn't be pounding things. Well, and, you know, that's the thing I think is really funny is that we get this question a lot where people ask us, I don't know what product to develop. I don't know... um, you know, what services I should offer. It means you're not outreaching enough. Right. Because Or not listening. Right. Because that's the thing. And that's why, you know, we talk a lot about networking mm-hmm. and audience building and starting before you even know what you're really going to mm-hmm. do. Right. So Jeff has been doing the podcast for two years, a little over two years. A little over two years. You figure it would have been two years, January 15th. Okay. And so... And then, you know, you started a Facebook group a couple months ago Mm -hmm. and that's been growing. Mm -hmm. And your audience said, you know, as you're talking about, you know, building an audience and having a platform and they're all saying, we don't know how to build a platform. I don't know where to start. What Mm -hmm. should, you know, where should I be? How often do I have to be? How do I build a website? You know, just like what you said, what do I need to get started? Mm -hmm. And, um your audience will tell you those things, mm-hmm. right? And you guys that are in the small biz life community, you do that for us all the time. You're always talking to us. Right. You're always talking to us. You're always telling us what you need. You know, we look at the questions that you ask and we say, okay, how can we address that through the podcast, through HQ content? Mm-hmm. Well, in a way we make our life more difficult too, because we both radically believe in the idea that our information's free. Um, so how do you then sell courses off of that? And, you know, that's really, I think more about organizing it and, 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 and presenting it in more useful ways for people, because one of the core tenets that we can't change is we give away all of our knowledge for free. Mm-hmm. And it might be more difficult. Like when here, we've talked about a couple previous episodes, but now you have to go find those episodes and listen to those and, and, and do all that. Or we can package it for you in a way where it's, it's right there for you. Well, and you know, and I think the the difference between the free content and the paid content—it's about depth too, yeah. right? So, you know, in January in Small Biz HQ, and if you sign up with the five dollar deal, you actually get all the old content. Mm-hmm. So you're going to get January and February, but you know, in January, like on the podcast, we've talked a lot about building tasks lists and organizing your tasks. We've done webinars about it, but when we did it for HQ. We did a lot of worksheets. We did like Mm step-by-step videos. We taught multiple ways to manage your tasks. We looked at pieces of software. I mean, that's the nice thing is, you know, when you're getting paid for the work, it gives you that that time to, uh, like I said, to go a bit deeper and and make it more beneficial to the people who receive it. So, I mean, that's all you can really do in life. Right. So that's, so, you know, to kind of reiterate, like, if you're not out there, like even if you don't have your own community built yet, mm-hmm. you know, I spent a lot of time when Jeff was sick on Friday night, just going into some of the other groups that I'm a member of mm-hmm. and interacting with people and answering their questions and seeing what they were struggling with. Mm-hmm. 
and it was funny because then we ended up seeing, you know, a big bump in the number of people who joined the group <laughs> over, you know, over the last uh, 24 hours because of that. So, you know, even if you don't have your own platform yet, go into other mm -hmm. groups and figure out what people are talking about and help, you know, use that to help you develop your products and develop yeah. your content. Because ultimately, you know, the core of any good product is you are answering the need of a client. You're answering their need. And the selling part is just through their language explaining how you're solving their problem. Right. So the thing is, if you, and especially even if you're starting off, you know, most people until you get large, you know, you can't containerize that. But that's why we always talk about networking being important too, is networking and, and just being helpful helps you make those connections, helps you learn the products that you need to go forward in your business. If you're sitting there trying to do it all on your platform, you're being unfair to your potential clients because you're not finding them. And then, and then allowing them to find more information from you and then buy products from you. Right. So I think to sum up, I think there are three things that you're really focused on. It seems like you're focused on, you know, maintaining our client relationships, right, with our HQ members. Well, I think maybe even solidifying it a bit more. Right. Yeah. So I have more time to be more more mouthy to the group and more drill sergeanty, <laughs> I think is what you're. So I think, so that's one, right. Is, is client relations Two, you were talking about building up sales funnel and increasing sales. Mm -hmm. And then the third one is new product development. Yeah. And so if you kind of go back to what we were talking about in the priorities episode, we said your priorities should be right. Sales and product development. Mm -hmm. Right. And, and, delivering the products that you have and we don't you know it's funny because we are very cognizant of the things that we tell you to do when we're doing this show mm -hmm. and so when we're planning out what jeff's transition is going to look like you know we live what we speak yeah and and really too i mean especially the newer your businesses until you've matured a bit uh revenue is going to be your focus mm -hmm. you know and you know like i said until you've exceeded your expectations, revenue will probably be your focus. And 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 you can pull that percentage back and put more in, but you can't drop the ball on your customers and you can't drop the ball on new product development. You know, to me, those are the sort of the three pillars of um, you know, of a business. Uh any business, whether it's delivering uh uh fictional books or whether it's delivering courses, you have those three things that you're required to do. And if you're not doing those, you're being unfair to yourself and to your potential clients that you are ignoring. And when you don't listen to your clients, even the ones that don't pay you, you're hurting yourself and your business. So mm -hmm. you have to do all that. The rest of the stuff is the hand that wraps your, that holds together those pillars. Those are the things that we work to automate away or to hire other people to replace. Right. But it's, it, and this is, you know, this, I think this, a, uh, applies to brick and mortar businesses, mm -hmm. service based businesses, product based businesses, artist, everyone. Right. You know, Jeff said, you know, your focus should be on sales. I can't tell you how many small businesses are not focused on sales. No. They're focused on what does my website look like? They're focused on. I, until that font gets changed, I just can't. Oh I've been able to look at my website. God, I can't. Like, guys. Seriously, I can't tell you how many times like I have wanted to rip my eyeballs out because I see small businesses going, well, if I could just get my font right, if I could just get this picture no. like four pixels over from where it is right now, you know, I can't sell anything because my website's not right. I can't sell anything because I can't make beautiful graphics for Pinterest. I can't stop it. Stop it right now. Hold on. You're, don't get in. That's the conference call talk. Don't All right, don't okay. get lost. I understand, honey. I understand. It just drives me crazy. I'm holding her back in the corner right now, folks. It's kind of exciting. Yeah, so if you're in HQ, you're going to want to be on the call on, oh, yes. on Wednesday. Okay, because... <laughs> mm, 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 mm. Mm. Hold me back. <laughs> Hold me back. 
I just can't. Uh, <sighs> you're glowing. She glows at these <laughs> moments, folks. I get, you know, I like, you know. We love our people. All we do. Them. And and we're really heavily invested in you guys, especially those of you that are really, you know, that are posting on a regular basis in, you know, if you're an HQ member and you're posting in there or, you know, if you're in the small biz life community, we really are invested in you guys. Mm -hmm. Um, you would probably be amazed to know like how many of your businesses we discuss on a regular basis. (laughs) Um, we do, Yeah, you know, because we've become invested in seeing you grow. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I'm, I'm excited by the fact that, you know, that community building is going to be part of what you're doing. Yeah. You know, cause I think, you know, that first of all, I think it's a lot of fun. Um, yes. but you know, getting to know you guys as well as we have mm-hmm. has been a really fun journey. You know, and the thing I think too, is, you know, really it's like, when we're teaching people, we're learning not only their wants and needs, but it makes us better at what we do as well, too. So it's always, and sometimes we get asked crazy questions that we have no idea what to do with. Uh, but it forces us to keep learning because that's part of our job. Because part of your job is doing your small business. Part of our small business is figuring out ways to make, to take the crap out of your small business. Right. Well, I mean, it's funny. It's like last week we talked about recur posts. Mm-hmm. And we both went, holy crap, this is an amazing piece of software. <laughs> Why are we using Recurpost? Right. And so, you know, one of the things that we're going to be working on this summer is actually transitioning mm-hmm. over to Recurpost. Yep. Um, oh, we have some nifty nifty technological tricks coming up, too. Uh, so, you know, uh, there's interesting stuff there, but those have to be looking at side pieces because they're not part of those three core fundamentals. Right. Uh, when they get to their shot, there will be bits of time during the day I can work on stuff like that, but they're not the focus. And trust me, there's, there's website redesigns, you know, for two of our three brands. Um, there's stuff that has to happen like that too, but you know what, if it's good enough, it has to go. Right. Right. And I think that that's, that's really important because there are like two of our sites. We really want to, you know, we want to reskin them, (laughs) you know, we want to redesign accounting and focus but right now, the main focus is keeping our customers happy, you know, bringing in more revenue mm-hmm. and developing those products. Yep. And so those things, the web, des- the web redesign is going to have to wait. Mm-hmm. And, you know, like I said, until the business matures, those should be everyone's focuses. Mm-hmm. And, you know, because as you're making more money, you can start off sourcing some of the stuff too, where it's like, you know what? I really just don't have time to do that. I'm going to pay someone. I know what I want. I'm going to pay someone who can, de- I think can deliver it. Or I would ask someone to do something else to free me up time to do this. You know, it's like one of the, one of the great things is I'm a big advocate that you need to understand all of the core fundamentals of your business as a small business owner, how to sell, how to do marketing, each of those things. But the thing is, as you start bringing in more revenue that gives you money one of the things you can do is replace your weaknesses with either outsourced talent or employees mm-hmm. or technology. Really, those are the three. We call them all automation you know, on the show, but two of the three have been around much longer than, than, than computers. You know, But the thing is, you, you do that when you start bringing in the revenue, and then you have enough of an understanding that you don't get sold a bill of goods by someone who's just trying to get some money off of you because they're trying to survive in their business. And maybe they're not that much better at marketing than you, but you're giving them marketing money. Maybe they're not a better salesperson than you, but you're giving them money to do sales for you. Right. And I I think one of the things that we did well, because we were so short on time, we automated a lot of things already. Mm -hmm. So there are a lot of pieces that are moving without any interaction Mm -hmm. from us or very little interaction from us. Whereas if we had kind of said, Hey, we're not really going to engage in social Mm -hmm. until we go full time. You know, that's already taken care of. And I'd be going full time with zero audiences in in all of our platforms. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Yeah. And that's not the case. Yes. So, you know, I think, 
if you haven't made the transition to full time yet and you're saying, you know, I really want to do this, but I can't do it until I go full time or I'm so, you know, I am full time and I'm so busy right now that I can't imagine adding this piece. Mm -hmm. I really want you to go back and think about, Mm -hmm. you know, and if you join HQ in February, we did a whole week on automation. Yeah. You know, we talked about automation tips for your home and your business. There are a lot of things that you are probably spending time on that you could easily have a piece of software do for you. Yeah. Or you could easily hire, you know, a VA or have, you know, if you've got teenagers, teach your teenagers how to do it, Mm -hmm. you know, and help get them some social media marketing experience, Mm -hmm. you know, help get them into some of these components of your business. Well, let them earn some of the cash they take from you too, you know. So it's like you want cash to the mall, it's time to help mom. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, you know, I, I I think a lot of times we get stuck in this trap that we can't. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I want you to stop doing that. Yes. And there'll be more on that in the call this week <laughs> for the HQ folks. So, um, so we talked, we talked about your schedule. We talked a little bit about what your focus is going to be. What my three pillars, the three pillars what are you most excited about? Most? Yes. That is acceptable to say on the podcast. <laughs> I should probably preface that. <laughs> okay. Um, I think it's more time to interact with the audience. You know, I, I think that's the most exciting part. I mean, it's great. I want to have m- more time to write. More, more and more time actually with my friends in real life, but probably those two are are, are pretty close. Where my friends have kind of got ignored really bad for the last couple of years, uh, so that that excites me being able to actually interact with my friends again. And we are so grateful to our friends for being so understanding <laughs> as we're doing this. But um, on the other hand, you know, uh, I, I I for for I interact heavily with the small biz life people. And, and the world builders and Volt Garduel people. And I just can't wait to do more of it because to me, that's the most exciting part of the business. It's, it's, it's seeing people getting those aha moments. It's seeing people um, move ahead and hit breakthroughs that really energize me more than anything else where, you know, it's like good download numbers are nice. Getting likes and retweets are wonderful. And obviously uh, revenue is always good. Mm. Uh, but for me is, that's not as exciting to me as, as seeing the people who get helped. Well, and you know, I think one of the things that's been really cool as you've been telling your friends and most of your friends are very creative people like you are telling them that you're making this transition and then they're all going, Holy crap, he's really doing it. Trust me. If you're in your twenties or thirties and you've given up a part of you to do the safe thing, I understand and respect that. But if you don't start working on it now, trust me, when you get to your like 46, uh, you're going to regret it. Mm-hmm. You're going to regret it. Don't, don't be that guy. That's right. Cause he's a jerk. <laughs> <laughs> he's not a jerk. He's very cute. He's got great curly hair. Um, what is, what's, do you have any fears or any apprehensions? Of course I do. You know, this is I'm I'm stopping doing safe and I'm starting to do dangerous. Uh, but uh, I mean, they've been mitigated, you know. So it's like, yes, I'm afraid that the business flops. Uh, I'm afraid um, that a dog will bite me and I will lose a leg tomorrow, uh, which is less likely. I'm not trying to <laughs> make those equivalent at all. But you know, I, I have lots of fears, but you know, I mean. Through the planning, you know, and the things that we've learned and we've started to implement, I have a belief that I the form that I think it's going to be in might not be the same, but it will succeed. Mm-hmm. And so, and if it doesn't, my family won't be destroyed because that was part of it too. Right. <laughs> um. So, can I tell the health insurance story? Yeah. Okay. Oh, geez. So. I'm homesick with the flu and Jeff comes home on Tuesday and he's ripped. He is so pissed off um, because they messed up 
the like his exit letter, I guess, from work. Yeah, they called it my letter of resignation. Um, here, I'll, I guess I, sh- I should tell it because sure. I, I, I understand the flow of the story a bit, okay. bit more. So I, I get these things like, could you take care of these things um, and get them in as soon as you can with your badge and your uh, uh, the door swipey thing? Uh, that's the technical term, door swipey. The, the door swipey thing. And so I'm like, okay. Uh, I, I respond, oh, yeah, sure. I'll probably be able to get to this tomorrow. And then I open up the form. Uh, and it's for people who do not qualify for retirement health care, which I wouldn't stepping out of my job. But when I reach retirement age, I've become what they call vested, uh, or at least in, in the best of my knowledge, I'm supposed to be vested. Um, and and there's been some budget issues, and I'm uh, like starting to get a little worried that maybe I missed something. And the one thing I pay attention to was that. Uh, not that I need it. I, I can get my health care through the VA, but my wife couldn't because she's not a veteran. I, I guess there's a connection there somehow. <laughs> and um, and also I wanted the chance to be on the same insurance with her at that point. It would just be simpler. Um, but, uh, but when I reached approximately the age of 65, I could get us both health care for the remainder of our lives. That was one of the reasons I stayed as long as I did. And, uh, and we made sure that you would have 10 years in, like you've got what, 10 years and 17 days or something yeah, like something, that. Yeah. Something like that. And, um, 13 maybe. <laughs> well, in two more days, it'll be 13. Mm-hmm. But, um, and I get this letter saying, nope, no health. And I go into what they called my letter of resignation. And it's something they wrote to me telling me how my benefits are going to be rolled out over the, the end of it. And one of the things in there is that I didn't qualify for health insurance. Yeah, there were some other issues in there as well, too. But that was the one that really caught my eye. And so I came home, flipped off, thinking, like, it's done, you know, dream over. And, you know, and we talked about it, and we looked at the math, we looked at the numbers, and it doesn't need to be. And and we determined before it got settled that, you know, worst case scenario, they would be forced to pay me back quite a bit of money, actually, um, uh, if I went on my own. The thing is, I think I can grow this to a much bigger thing than either one of our jobs between the three brands. So um, it made no sense to do there. And worst case, I, I have expertise and skills that, you know, I can, worst case, I can fall back and get another job. Uh, that is really kind of not in my brain thoughts, though, because I really think this is going to work. Uh, except the final form might be a little different than it is today. Time will tell that, but we're both flexible, smart people. We'll we'll make it work, but we will get there. And um, and so really, especially like the whole thing of l- potentially losing that benefit that I thought I had squared away, and I thought my clever machinations had paid off, really helped wash away the remainders of my fear. Not really wash away, but they're mitigated, right? You know, because it, it, to me, we we've we've been so overly. Uh, conservative, that this is a very low risk maneuver. Right. And well, I think, you know, the thing for me, you know, when you were walking around the house on Tuesday and I was really sick and I think that probably didn't help that I was really sick at that point. And you're sitting there going, well, I'm going to, ha- you know, I'm going to have to do five more years. <laughs> like, like it's prison time. Right. Exactly. And at one point, kind of after I digested a little bit, because I was freaking out a little bit too. Um, I think it was sick brain. But not only that, though, too, was like this was a well played plan that was just getting punched right, back in my face. Right. Yeah. And um, and at one point, I just looked at you and said, "No, you're leaving your job." Mm-hmm. And the weight and <laughs> the like, the disgust and the that just all like washed away mm. and you smiled and you started to glow again. And you were just like, okay, I just needed you to say that. And it was so hard too. Cause then once I heard it, you know, Crystal and I did some research went in and, oh yeah, yeah, you are vested. We were wrong. Whoops. Sorry. <laughs> but that, I mean, that was, that day was panic for you. Yeah. Like, you know, and I kind of, I could see your dream slipping away and the effect that that had on you that mm. day. And I said, no, like we'll we'll make it work. I, mm-hmm. You know, because I have I have much more confidence. I think 
those five years you could have stayed with the state. Yeah. I think you're going to make that money next year. Mm -hmm. You know, like all five years worth next year. And so I, I'm not concerned about this mm -hmm. at all. Yeah. You know, even with how, you know, conservative we are financially, mm -hmm. I'm just not. Yeah. So, you know, but this hat, it's funny because there have been so many times throughout this, you know, last two months where we've kind of gotten punched down. If February was a pretty bad month. February is, yeah. I mean, February, I had two wisdom teeth taken out. We were in a car accident, you where know. Everyone's fine. Where everybody's fine. We both got the flu. We, you know, had the scare that we weren't going to have the retiree health insurance. Like, you know, and then they said, well, if you want, you can, you know, you can come back. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't, we'll take, you know, we'll rescind your resignation if you want us to. Like, we had so many opportunities throughout this. We could have said, are you sure you want to do this? Because mm -hmm. you don't have to. Are you sure? Because your life is so comfortable right now. Yeah, and it is. And um, we just, no, no. You know, the thing is, do we want to at least move towards the best people we can be? Or do we just want comfort? I mean, I think we could get back to comfort very easily, even if this flops. You know, it's one of those things, once you've achieved something, getting back there is not as difficult. Mm -hmm. um, so. Like I said, I mean, worst case, you know, your job, you can go back to the state for up to a year. Yeah. You know, Next. which is really weird, but that's not going to happen because like it's going back to prison. It's right. No. You know. No, and their budget is done. <laughs> so. You know, I just, I think the reason that we tell you that story is because we don't want you to think that it's been all lollipops and unicorns for the last two months <laughs> because it hasn't been. And here we are, you know, both recovering from the flu, trying to make it, you know, just a few more minutes to finish out this episode. Then we can edit it. Then we can do the show notes, get all of this stuff to launch the episode. And then go to sleep. And, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> But, you know, that we want you to understand, you know, that there have been so many times in the last two months where we could have said, you know what? No, we're not going to do this. Mm -hmm. Jeff's going to stay at his job and maybe he'll look for another job or maybe we'll transition out of this later. Mm -hmm. And the thing that we realized is that in order for us to continue on this path, mm -hmm. We need him to have his first day. Yep. And we're very excited about his first day. As we're recording this, we have two days until uh, my first day. Yeah. And actually, the Small Biz HQ call will be on your first day. That's true. Yes. Uh, so you can I'll, celebrate that. I'll be in an extra pump mood. So, you know, think about if you're transitioning into your business, what do you want your first day to look like, right? Your first day working in your new job as a full-time self-employed person. Mm. And if it's been a while since you've had a first day, it might be time to have another one mm -hmm. and just say, you know what? Let me kind of look that if I started my business all over again, mm. what would I focus on? Yeah. You know, what would my schedule look like diff you know, differently than it is now? And have that, you know, pick a day Hell, pick March 1st, right? Mm -hmm. Have a first day with Jeffrey. <laughs> um, but, you know, kind of recommit to your business, right? Mm -hmm. Recommit to your life and and say, yeah, this is this is where I'm going. And sort, sort of to, to help put a finishing touch on this, the reason we do our yearly planning and our weekly planning and our daily planning and our task planning isn't because we think, Planning is a lot of fun and giggles. No, planning sucks. Plan, planning's boring. Uh, the, the creative part where you're trying to figure the strategies is interesting, but the actual planning part is kind of boring. Yeah. But the thing is, it makes sure that you're doing what you need to to get towards your, your dream vision of yourself. This person who, if you fail at getting a quarter of the way to, you could have one heck of an awesome life. You know, who is that person how do you get to that person? Our planning and dreaming and strategizing are what allow us to make sure that the tasks we're doing are relevant and moving to 
those versions of ourself. Awesome. So we're just going to end right on that. Have a great week. This was Small Business Life.